Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some no line coloring with my alcohol markers. No line coloring means that I'm going to be stamping in a light ink and giving this a very artistic look and there's not gonna be any harsh stamped lines. The image that I'm going to be using today is Sending You a Smile. This is a large stamp set from Gina K Designs. I'll be using that really large image on here. One of the reasons that I chose this image is because it has a lot of space to color and it also has a lot of the artist drawn lines on there. So I place this in my MISTI and I'm going to condition the stamp because I want to make sure I'm getting a really good stamped impression. So I start that by just wiping that with my tidy towel and then I'm also just going to rub my hand over it. I could also ink it up in Versamark ink. I just really want to have this conditioned first. Now I'm going to be inking this up in Skeleton Leaves ink. So this is a very light color. It's also an amalgam ink, which means that you can use it with your alcohol markers. You can use it with water coloring. It's one of those inks that just works with everything. So I'm going to stamp this large image down. Now there is a lot of detail in here and I wanna make sure I'm really getting that good first impression. So I'm going to ink it up and stamp it again. I'm really going to push down in those center areas. I'll also clean off my stamp and I'm going to leave it in my MISTI in case I decide I want to add some black lines instead. So something I do not do very often but I wanted to do it today is what's called or what I think is called mapping. And what that means is I'm going to take the lightest shade out of the colors that I've picked out and I'm going to map out my shadow areas. So for instance, on that first flower I did, I am gonna add that line where two petals are overlapped. Anytime that I feel there is going to be a shadow, that is where I'm going to put my lightest color. Starting with your lightest color, it, it gives you a little bit, I think, more comfort because it's not so harsh and dark and it gives you a little bit more freedom. So anytime there is a petal overlapping another one, I'm going to add that light color because that is where my shadow areas are going to go. So I will do that throughout all of my flowers. That's going to give us a really nice starting point. Now the cardstock that I'm going to be coloring on today is Express It cardstock. It is a very smooth cardstock. It's really great for using with your alcohol markers, but of course use whatever you are comfortable with. Typically, I just jump right in with my dark colors and start coloring, but since there are so many lines in here, I really wanted to pay attention and kind of draw my focus in to where those petals are all separated. Now, once I have everything mapped in, I'm just going to start with this first flower to begin with. Then I'm going to come in with my markers. So I will be using Olo markers today. I'm going to have the colors listed at the top of the screen and then also over on my blog as reference. I am going to start by taking that darkest color and I'm literally going to trace over the artist drawn lines. I love when artists include this because it really helps me add definition to my flowers and I don't have to sit and really think about where everything is going to be. So I'm taking that dark marker and drawing over those lines and then adding flicks on the opposite side of the petal. Then I'm gonna work my way through. So you can see I have a four color blend here, four marker color blend. I'm gonna go back in with my next color, which is the R5.5 in the Olo marker set. And I'm going to kind of trace over exactly where I had colored in and then extend it out just a little bit. And I'll repeat that until I get to my lightest color. Now, some people like to leave white spaces in their flowers, that's totally fine. I don't think there's anything ever wrong when it comes to coloring because it's really what you're comfortable with, how you view it, and what feels good to you. Now, I'll be honest, when I was coloring this, I did not like it. I was really questioning if I should continue. You'll see as I go um, how the flower is going to come together, but trust me, stick with it and you'll feel better about it once the image is fully colored in. Now this was my uh, third marker. I'm gonna finish it up with the lightest marker and fill in the rest of the area. Now I didn't like this right here, so I am going to speed it up a little bit. 
I'm going to come in again with those same colors and just help intensify everything and those shadow areas. Now for the rest of the coloring with the flowers, I am going to leave in all of the coloring, but I did speed it up quite a bit because honestly, it's all very repetitive. I'm going to follow these exact same steps for the rest of the petals, kind of also using that light color that I mapped out earlier as a guide. But I'm really just doing one petal at a time. I am not going to jump around. I just want to focus on the one petal and then kind of move on from there. But each of the petals does get colored twice. You don't have to. That is just really what felt good to me. I'm going to pop in here and there if I have any comments, but for the most part with the coloring of the flower, I am going to just try and put on some light music that you can enjoy while watching the coloring. Um, another thing I did want to mention is that I am keeping um, another dark area towards the center. So where the center is and the flower petals meet, I am going to try and keep my darkest color focused down there because I feel like it would be a little bit darker in there versus towards the edge of the petals. So now I'm going to pop on some music and I'll be back in a little bit.
Now I'm finishing up my last flower here and you may notice that there is a spot. I have absolutely no idea where that spot came from, but it's there. It's fine. I'm going to be die cutting the flower out anyway. Now for the leaves. I don't think I have any real good guidance here, guys, because leaves are my nemesis. I struggle really bad with coloring in leaves. I have the colors listed on the top. This time I am using my Copic markers because there was a color combination that I really liked. When I started it out, I started with my darkest color and I added it to the artist drawn lives. So I lines. So I kind of kept the darkest color towards the center. And then that last color I used was a YG21, I think. I didn't like that. I, I like usually having a bright green as kind of an undertone, but I didn't like it here. So when I came back over my leaves, I kind of colored over that. Now, some of these leaves are going to have a lot of ink on them. You may notice if you do this like me, if you add a lot of color or if you go over it too many times, your cardstock is going to get shiny. And we really don't want to go over it too many times. That's kind of the point of having a smooth cardstock as it's supposed to be, you know, easier to work with. In my case, yes, the cardstock is great. I was just really struggling with my leaves. So I'm going to go through and color them all. I kind of sit back. I honestly, I, I go to Instagram and Pinterest and look at examples of artists that I've saved that have colored leaves. And I decided that I was going to come back in and kind of change it up here in just a little bit. So I'll get through this first pass and then I'll pop back in with what I decided for my second pass. So here I'm finishing up a leaf. I didn't go through all of them mainly because I was just really not happy with how everything was looking. So what I decided to do was kind of a go-to where I'm just going to blend it all out. I'm not going to focus so much about the artist drawn lines. So here again, wherever one leaf is overlapping another, I added a shadow area. And then I decided I wanted to deepen that. So I came in with Copic BV29. It is a pretty dark, like blue violet color. Once again, I added way too much color on here, mainly because I was very indecisive. So kind of take what you want out of me coloring the leaves. I definitely was not completely thrilled with how they went, but I absolutely loved my flowers, so I was hoping that the flowers would be the focal point and the leaves would kind of be overlooked, I guess, in a sense. Now that my leaves are done, I will do the centers of the flowers. And for this, I will go back to my Olo markers and I'm doing kind of a golden color here. So I listed those colors once again at the top of the screen and I went around. I started with going around it with my darkest color and then kind of filling it in with the lightest colors as I go. Again, I wasn't completely feel, feeling it, um, but I just decided to kind of go with it and I was going to add some details to it at the end. I won't be showing every step I take throughout the card making process of putting this together because I am spending so much time with the coloring. So what I'm going to do is be taking the coordinating die and I'm going to be die cutting this out and I'll die cut out a second piece and adhere it together to add stability. I'm going to be working now on the background for this. So I'm using a brick stencil on layering weight white cardstock from Gina K Designs. 
and I'm using my old to new sticky mat. This is their grid or sticky mat from their stamp wheel. I'm using it to hold down my stencil right now. And then I'm coming in with soft stone ink and a blending brush and just kind of haphazardly adding that color. So I peel back my stencil. You can see I didn't even really complete it all the way to the edge. And that is fine. I didn't want it completely covered. So for a sentiment, off screen, I went ahead and stamped the word smile and die cut that out because it has a coordinating die. But now I'm going to be adding a sentiment to the top and the bottom of that die cut word. And I like to use my misty rulers to help me line up these kind of strip sentiments so they're straight. So I started out with the one that goes at the bottom. I am stamping it in black onyx ink. I'm going to bring in my die cut word smile and use that as a guide for the top word. So this will say your smile brightens my day. Now I already had kind of planned out where this was where this was going to go because I used my flower bouquet as a guide. I had kind of placed it there, got an idea about how much space I had and then I just moved it so I could stamp my sentiment. So of course I can't resist adding splatters to my background. So I will be bringing this panel over to my splat box and I'm going to be using the um, shimmery, shimmery snow spray from Gina K Designs. Just kind of putting my paint brush literally in the jar and tapping that all over the background. Be sure to shake those up really, really well before you use them. And then I'm also going to be bringing in this black ink. And I know this seems pretty out there, pretty intense, but honestly, the flower is going to cover up so much of it that it really is going to add that subtle interest. I just made sure to mask off the stamped sentiments so I didn't get splatter on those. So the background is trimmed down to four by five and a quarter and added to an A2 size card front. And then I added tape runner to my floral image and adding that kind of across the card front. So I have my sentiment down there. My smile is attached with liquid glue. And then in the center of the flowers, I'm using this white pen. This is like a, I think it's called Posca paint pen. I just added white dots to the center of the flowers. So now I have my card complete. I didn't add any other embellishments because I'm going to let the flower kind of take away the show. I hope you enjoyed today's card tutorial on no line coloring. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you again soon.